this video, we will address the overviews and the manufacturing processes of various types of fittings for aircraft rigid tubing. Aircraft fluid lines are usually made of metal tubing or flexible hose. Metal tubing, also called rigid fluid lines, is used in stationary applications and where long, relatively straight runs are possible. They are widely used in aircraft for fuel, oil, fire protection, oxygen, instrument, and hydraulic lines and are identified by color codes. The tube can be manufactured with a bead, with a double flare, a single flare, or flareless depending on its application of use. The beaded type requires a bead and a section of hose and hose clamps. It is used only in low or medium pressure systems. A double flare is used on soft aluminum alloy tubing 3 eighths of an inch outside diameter and under. The single flare, to include the double flare tubing, consists of a sleeve and a nut. The nut fits over the sleeve and when tightened, draws the sleeve and the tubing flare tightly against the male fitting to form a seal. The flaring tool used for aircraft rigid tubing has a male and female dies ground to produce a flare of 35 to 37 degrees. The use of a flareless tube fitting eliminates all tube flaring and requires an operation referred to as presetting. Flareless tube assemblies should be preset with the proper size presetting mandrel. MS flareless fittings are designed primarily for high pressure, which is 3000 psi, hydraulic systems that may be subjected to severe vibration or fluctuating pressure. The practical test standards requirement specifies to make a replacement fluid line, aluminum or stainless steel, and to fabricate and install a metal tubing. Both are level three requirements. So what we have right here is a pipe cutter. All right, so you're gonna use this to cut your soft pipe, like this piece of 3 8 aluminum tubing. On the end of this, after you cut it, you also have a deburring tool. You can, and on this side, you feel it grooved. That's so you can get the outside, and this tip, you stick on the inside of the tube, and you rotate just to deburr the inside. And on the back, it just slides right in. In order to use this tool, you'll place the pipe in here between these two rollers. And once you get the pipe seated in there, you just turn it clockwise, counterclockwise, and rotate it up until it gets seated nice and on the pipe. And once it's seated, then you'll rotate counterclockwise. And every time you do one full rotation, you turn it again. So let me unscrew it and I'll show you guys how to use this. So as you can see, like I said earlier, you place the pipe right there in the rollers, just about where you would like it be cut at and you tighten it down. So as you can see it's nice and snug on the pipe. And from there, you down, you just one full turn, tighten, another full turn, another full turn, and you just keep tightening as you're turning until that nice clean cut. Now a nice clean cut. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the deburring tool on the end of the pipe cutter. You're going to insert it into the end of the pipe that you just cut off. And what you're doing is you're trying to deburr the inside just to get rid of those metal shavings. You're just going to turn. And then once you're done doing that, you want to make sure you kind of clean it off and blow it out so that way you don't get any metal shavings. What I have here is a file. What you can do is you can take it and you file the end of the piece you just cut, so that way you can deburr it for the outside and make sure you get it nice and square. 
is smooth. So that way when you go to flare it, after you flare it and you go to make your connection, you don't have any metal shavings or any nicks or anything that can cause any damage or stress cracks. Voila. Here we have a deburring tool. Once I've cut this tube, you'll take this tool, rotate it back and forth in there, trimming out any burrs that may exist on that. Burrs might cause this to cause a stretch crack. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get ready to do a flare, uh, a single flare on the end of this tube right here. And before you do the flare, you have to put your V-nut and your sleeve on the pipe before you flare it. So when I'm putting the V-nut and the sleeve on there, you can actually just go right ahead and put the sleeve right inside and you can slide it right over the tube. It'll be on the inside there before we end up flaring at this end of the pipe here. So in order to flare it, you get the flaring tool and you have your, you have your uh, holder which has actually sizes on there for the pipe and you put it in the correct size hole and then when you've got it mounted in there, you're gonna usually you go 5 sixteenths up from the uh, top of the hole here and you can actually use the uh, end of the flaring tool itself here where there's a little little notch here and that's about 5 sixteenths which would be perfect height for the, for the pipe. For the roller flare process, swing the clamp open and the height gauge automatically swings over the tube opening. Insert the tubing to the gauge to obtain the proper height. Then close the clamp and the tube is set at the correct height to begin the flaring process. Also, when you are doing this job, you need to lubricate all the threading on the, on the tool itself and the cone before you do the flare. So when you're doing this, basically you would take the lubrication and you would just basically spray, spray the threads just to get it lubricated. Same thing on the flaring tool itself. And then on the cone. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and put your pipe in the correct size here, which is 3 8 And then you would clamp it together, just to start with slightly. Once I get it a little bit tight here, I can check the height of the pipe here. So we're in slightly tight and see it's probably a little just a hair too long there a little bit more hair than a hair we'll loosen up pull it back up here and see if it's close enough to the 5 16th mark and it's just right about the edge there which would be fine and then once you get it set, set up like that you take your flaring tool and you make sure it's angled properly where it can lock in place and then you start by screwing it down so you just get snug on there. Once you have it snug on there, you're gonna do about six to seven half turns. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right away. You have one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna go ahead and just do seven to be safe. Seven. And then once you have that done, you can undo the flaring tool again. Disassemble it, slide the pipe out. and then you have a flare. And usually what you do after you finish that, you just also make sure there's no more burrs around the edges and you make sure it's all cleaned up around the inner side of that flare. And then once you have that done, you see that your B-nut and your sleeve will slide over there and your sleeve is actually what stops it on the flare. So before we use the tool, we'll need to set it up You'll have to make sure you have the right size die locks for your tube, and then you're going to want to lubricate the entire thing um, on every piece that's going to be moving and used. So basically our threads for our compressor screw, um, this one here as well needs some, and then our dive lock and our adapters here also get some. All right, so I'm Dominic Khan from Savannah Technical College, and here we have a double flaring tool. Um, the first uh, parts that really com um, comprise this entire thing is six pieces. Um, it starts with your compressor screw here, which is used um, to flare it. It has the cone attached to it. Uh, you have your com uh, 
your die blocks, which are actually inside of the uh, clamp right now, but those have specified uh, sizes for each of your tubes um, um, written on the sides of them. And then your clamping screw for holding your die blocks in. And then you also have your latch bar, which is on the bottom, and that flips out to hold your die blocks in. When you need to change them as well, you can lift it up and pull those out. Uh, and then you have your vise tab, which is actually inside of our vise right now, but that's what holds it on to the vise. And then you have an adapter plate, um, which is here, and that has corresponding numbers to the side of the die block that is pointing out to be used. And now to use it, you're going to start by lifting up your die block in the back and beginning to feed in the tube and then pushing it out until it just shows on the other side. Then you're going to want to take your adapter and swap it to the size that was on the outside of your die block, which ours would be five. Right here. And then you're going to push through until it is flush to your compressor screw. And then you're going to begin to clamp down your dot box so that your tube is locked in place. All right, so we'll start with flaring the tube. Um, we'll start with lubing the tube before flaring. Turn down our compressor screw. And the instructions say to tighten it down until the face of the adapter meets with the face of the die block. What this does is flatten down our rigid tube to prepare for the double flare. tight as I can get it. Move the adapter plate out the way. And then we'll turn down our compressor screw again. I like to wipe off and relube the cone. line just to be sure and then turn down and the instructions doesn't say how many turns you need just tells you not to over tighten Hello, today we're going to be talking about a flareless nut. Um, to begin with, you're going to need a, a squared off tubing that's been deburred. After, you're going to get your mandrel and place this into a vise so it's secure. Once you get that, you're going to have your sleeve and your nut, and you're going to place the sleeve into the nut with the, the slimmer side facing out. And only the slimmer side will be sticking out of the actual nut. The other side will not. Um, after that, you're going to take your nut Place the tubing through the uh, sleeve and nut as shown. And then you're gonna place the tubing into your mandrel, which is in your vise, all the way down until it's seated. Your nut is gonna screw on and be snug. After you get it snug, refer to your tech data to torque it down. Uh, about a turn and a half is gonna be the most you're gonna do. Throughout this whole process, you're gonna be oiling every step 
uh, and that way it will prevent stress cracking and uh, pulling out your threads. Once you're done uh, torquing it down, you're going to remove the nut and your crush sleeve will be permanently mounted to the end of your fitting. Hey, I'm Tim with STC. I, uh, today we'll be putting a flareless fitting onto a 3 8 piece of aluminum tubing. First step is going to be applying a liberal amount of lubricant to both the pipe and the inside of your crush sleeve. You'll then take your B-nut, slide over your tubing, slide your sleeve on with the thinner outside diameter of the sleeve toward the B-nut, take the entire tube, set it into the mandrel, making sure that that tube is seated, seated to the inside of the mandrel. Bring your B-nut to finger tight, which point you'll take an 11 16 wrench and do five sixths of a turn tightening down against the mandrel. And we'll release it. At this point, you will verify your sleeve is locked on and there's no damage to the inside of the pipe. The beading kit will produce beads in aluminum, brass, copper, and mild steel. Each tube size requires a specific size bead set die to produce the correct bead diameter to comply with mill spec specifications. To begin the beading process, clamp the tube between the rubber blocks a few inches from the end of the tube. Apply just enough tightness to prevent the tube from spinning. Over tightening may deform the tube. The tube will require lubrication prior to starting the beading process. Then slowly slide the beading tool over the tube rotating counterclockwise, occasionally adjusting the roller screw knob downward to main pressure on the tube. Form the bead slowly. Rotate the beading tool and tighten as you feel resistance let up. Continue rotating until the tube has the correct bead diameter in accordance with the bead specifications chart. Once you have completed the beading process, inspect your work. A properly formed bead should be clean and free of nicks, scrapes, or fractures. The beading process itself may leave roller lines on the tube, which is easily buffed off if necessary. Also, the slight flare raised on the end of the tube while beading should be removed with a fine tooth file. This will complete the bead process and the rigid tube manufacturing processes. Thanks for watching.